live and on air. Hi, I'm Dr. John LaPuma of Chef Clinic and Chef MD in Santa Barbara, California, and welcome to Culinary Rx from MedPage Today. Culinary Rx is our eight-minute primer on prescribing the right foods and avoiding the wrong foods for a specific patient and his case. And I'm so happy to have with me this morning two experts in culinary medicine, Dr. Michael Roizen, an internist and anesthesiologist and chief wellness officer of the Cleveland Clinic, and Dr. Robert Lustig, a pediatric endocrinologist at UCSF and a professor of pediatrics there. Good morning to both of you. Thanks so much for being here. It's really a pleasure. John, the privilege is ours, I'm sure. So this is Mike Roizen, and thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Dr. Lustig, it's really great. I admire your work. Uh, thank you for having me, and especially as a pediatrician commenting on 54-year-olds, you know, I'm really out of my element here. I, I don't, I, I, it'll take a little bit of a stretch, but I know you're capable of it, and uh, in fact, you're being too modest since you have done work in this area before. So here, today, we'll try to help a specific patient with high blood pressure, and you've both read the case, which I posted on Med's page today under Culinary Rx, where we had, and you saw them, I think, about 10 comments on what to tell this patient. Readers from Australia, from all over the United States, from South America, bariatric specialists, nurse practitioners, lots of people had ideas about what to, what to tell this patient to eat and what to tell the patient to avoid, uh, ranging from the DASH diet to the Mediterranean diet to not drinking beer, which I think is probably an error. But in any case, uh, here's the case, and we'll hear what uh, you guys have to say. So I'm just going to recount it for our live audience. Um, a 54-year-old Caucasian man who is asymptomatic presents for a checkup. He doesn't have medical problems, but has been told in the past that his blood pressure is a little high. He doesn't take medications. He tries to eat healthy. He doesn't salt his food, which is important. And he walks his dog every Sunday. Um, his physical exam is notable because he's a waist circumference of 41 inches and a body mass index of 38.2 kilograms per meter squared and a blood pressure of 168 over 96 in his left arm, measured twice, five minutes apart, sitting down like you're supposed to do it. Uh, he takes a multivitamin when he remembers. He doesn't take prescription medication again. And his labs, cholesterol, blood sugar, blood count, all within normal limits. He's prepared to take an ACE inhibitor, a common medication, of course, as you know, for hypertension and begin a more rigorous exercise program. But he really wants to optimize his diet. So for about a minute or a minute and a half each, um, and uh, Dr. Lustig, I'm going to give you the first shot. Um, what eating plan would you recommend? What foods and beverages should he specifically avoid? And which should he consume? And if you know it, how much should he consume of the foods that are good for him? Well, the first thing I would say is that if this guy is only walking his dog on Sunday, we better take the dog's blood pressure first. <laughs> uh, clearly, what this guy has, in 10 words or less, is he has metabolic syndrome. And you can tell from his waist circumference, you can tell from his BMI, and you can tell from his blood pressure. Even though we don't have the triglycerides, even though we don't have the glucose tolerance, you know, we can be pretty sure that this guy manifests metabolic syndrome. The question is, how do you treat metabolic syndrome? Now, this guy says he tries to adhere to a healthy diet. I don't even know what that means. You know, he says that his wife does the shopping, but what is it that she buys? We need to know a whole lot more in order to be able to make a rational, accurate prescription. If he is consuming processed food, the fact that he doesn't salt his food is sort of irrelevant because he is salting his food whether he recognizes it or not. The other issue, of course, is the beer, the 12-ounce beer that he's consuming is uh, not helping matters because it is helping contribute to metabolic syndrome as well. Um, the likelihood is that he's getting a tremendous amount of extra sugar in his diet if he's consuming processed food, and that in and of itself raises blood pressure. It's been referred to as the other white crystals. So it's not all just about salt. The bottom line is 
what I would tell this guy is, if he's eating processed food, stop, eat real food. And what kind of real food I think is very much up to him and his wife as to what they can ultimately agree on, as long as it doesn't come from a uh, freezer or from a, um, uh, a, a takeout uh, menu. I think uh, it's a good start. Okay. Is there an eating plan that's specific that you would recommend? Uh, I think that there are probably several eating plans that would probably work in this uh, venue. Certainly the Mediterranean diet could. Um, I think uh, the uh, paleo diet could work in this, uh, in this instance. Probably the only diet that has been shown to be effective for metabolic syndrome but that I would not advocate for in this patient would be a traditional Japanese diet because of the high salt content. But other than that, if it's real food, if we're talking low sugar, high fiber, if we're talking about foods that get your insulin re resistance down, your insulin sensitivity up, uh, I think it would probably do the trick. Okay, that's a, I understand that as a general approach. Um, let me, let me, uh, let's try Dr. Roizen. So, um, and then we'll come back to you and you guys can uh, uh, discuss the differing ideas. Um, Dr. Royston, um, which eating plan would you recommend? Which foods should he avoid and which foods should he specifically consume? Well, the worst part, John, is I agree with uh, Robert a, um, entirely, but I think th that I would actually say okay, we know 10,000 steps a day breaks down insulin resistance, he has to get in another habit, and then you want to analyze, is he addicted to some of these foods and which foods it is, and to get him off of whatever foods he's addicted to. So in, in that goal, I avoid the five food felons in virtually everyone, simple sugars, added syrups, any grain that isn't 100% whole grain, saturated fat and trans fat. So I think those are totally out for anyone at risk or who has metabolic syndrome and then um, and that obviously includes those things that cause inflammation such as red meat, um, egg yolks and other things that cause inflammation. So and I think it's important to find out where if he has stress and help him manage that. So it's the basic three things is you want to go on a Mediterranean or DASH diet. I call it, in fact, the, the diet that came out that is the MIND diet is exactly you on a diet. So I'm obviously prejudiced because it's exactly what's in our book. But it can't be done without physical activity if he's going to lose the weight. And it can't be done without helping him manage stress. So in those categories, I would do that. And yes, I would add you know, he's. I would tell him to take to split the multivitamin in half. Take half in the morning, half in the evening. Add some vitamin D. Make sure he's getting uh, DHA. But and and then talk to him. He's 54. Find out to make sure he's in a risk group that is appropriate for two baby aspirin a day with half a glass of warm water before and after. But it's a regular wellness program. I don't think it is just a diet alone. So those are my thoughts. Okay, so you both recommended something more comprehensive than um, than uh, a comprehensive approach. Um, but when you're sitting with him, which foods do you tell him to eat now to lower his blood pressure? Well, the first thing I would say is that what foods dr drive metabolic syndrome? And the short answer to that is it's refined carbohydrate and sugar. Refined carbohydrate because it drives insulin secretion, which drives weight gain, and sugar because it drives hepatic insulin resistance, both of which generate hyperinsulinemia, both of which drive energy into fat, both of which ultimately lead to that inflammatory response that Dr. Royson talked about. Now, this guy says that he eats healthfully. I don't know that anybody in America eats healthfully today. Um, the, the bottom line is we need to know a whole lot more about what he does eat. If he's consuming uh, significant amounts of processed food, he's getting 
enormous amounts of sugar and salt that he doesn't even know about. He may be doing it under the guise of low fat since so many people are on a quote low fat diet and that is likely actually driving his metabolic syndrome rather than helping it. So I would say before we uh, jump into a specific uh, type of uh, dietary plan which is so hard for people to stay on because virtually every diet regresses to the mean. Christopher Gardner showed that very nicely in his A to Z study. Let's just get them onto some real food, see how well that does and then we can tailor and tweak that diet as necessary based on the uh, response that he demonstrates uh, uh, when we change his uh, So you might diet. want a, uh, a dietary history from him uh, for sure. uh, Number one. In, in order to be able to say change this, don't change that. Right, absolutely. Is that correct? For, uh, number one, find out what it is they're eating because I'll tell you right now, it's not as 12 ounces of beer that did it. That the 12 ounces of beer is a marker for his general dietary uh, unre non-restraint. Or maybe just his taste in hops. For um, sure. Dr. Royzen, what would you tell him to eat or avoid? Very specifically, he's in front of you. I know you've done this with hundreds of executives. Well, again, what you have to do is find out what does he specifically eat. And you, find, and you find those foods and you go through it, the dietary history, and I do that with people because I take a little longer than most people, but I go through it and if you, don't, if you can't, don't have the time, you have a dietitian do it and you find out specifically what he eats, what has sugar in it, what has simple sugars in it, and you avoid those things. And I also am strong at avoiding uh, those things with carnitine, lecithin, and choline with it and find things he loves to eat and spices he loves to do. You taught me that you can do this with spices, John. And so you're the one who is a real pro at getting people to love life. You want him to love life, and maybe he should walk to the grocery store with his wife and so that they get some exercise in daily, if you will. But I think that 10,000 steps a day, you know, you make sure he's got a pedometer, and you make sure he starts walking at the same time because you're not going to cure this with food choices alone. And okay. Take with you. <laughs> with okay. So supportive. All right. So here, I'll, let me throw out a few foods and then we're going to um, wrap up because we're trying to keep this short and pragmatic. Um, uh, so you know, I'm. I know both of you know that um, there's at least one small study, actually now two three small studies that show that eating beets um, because of their nitrate, which is converted to nitric oxide, expands uh, arterial, uh, uh, allows arteries to expand, improves blood flow, uh, and actually lowers blood pressure quite significantly up to 16 millimeters of mercury in one study, both beets and beet juice. Does that have a role? Um, I have nothing against beets. <clears throat> I actually didn't know <laughs> <clears throat> I didn't know anything about the, uh, uh, the effect of the nitrates and nitric oxide. In general, we tend to tell people to avoid nitrates for the cancer-causing pr properties that they have, but if this patient has a specific problem with hypertension and we can do something to cause vascular dilatation to lower systolic pressure, I'm certainly not against it. My concern is that most of these patients, especially those with metabolic syndrome, have very high uric acid levels. And uric acid, as you know, is the uh, in, uh, endogenous inhibitor of nitric oxide synthase. So, you know, I would say that before you start adding beets, let's get rid of the sugar. And, Fair enough. And, and the worry I have with beets is that they do have a lot of sugar with them. Yes. And so I, I don't know the, I don't know the trade-off between those. I haven't limited beets in, in any of the patient populations, but haven't advocated it. So, John, you've got to, you know, this is like a short-term good for a long-term bad. Is the beets going to hook him on the sugars again and get him to do that? So I think you've got to, and I just don't know the answer to that. So I don't specifically advocate that. If they like beets as a vegetable choice, I don't inhibit it. Better to have a vegetable than not. <laughs> really good answers, by the way, terrific answers. Um, Dr. Lessing, by the way, that the sodium nitrate is what's converted with heat to nitrite and nitrosamines. Um, so 
that's different than the organic nitrate that occurs within beets. It's a different chemical compound. But in general, you're right, and uh, preserved foods have often sodium nitrate and nitrite. Um, there's actually also very good data for uh, a hibiscus tea. You may have read of a um, uh, hibiscus tea, which is used in uh, the Middle East and in South America and, and in uh, uh, Mexico as well. It's also called Jamaica, or which is spelled like Jamaica. Um, and it's the sepals of a hibiscus that are dried uh, and are in red zinger tea. I have a, here's a red zinger tea bag. Um, <laughs> and you, the dangers that have, that have been shown is 1.25 grams of, of uh, hibiscus um, uh, simmered for 20 minutes and uh, drunk um, in eight ounces of water actually has lowered systolic blood pressure um, uh, of 14 mils of mer mercury in some people in two studies. Um, and this is used as a, as a folk medicine, but it's also used in ways that um, are specific to lowering blood pressure, in part because the anthocyanins or color compounds appear to act like ACE inhibitors, like captopril does. It's actually been tested against captopril and shown to be equivalently effective. Uh, John, I'd something? like to say I'd like to say what I what I what we really need do is get someone who will coach this guy daily, okay. um, or at every other day to walking and eating healthier as well as managing stress, and then make a deal with him. At least I would, and say if your blood if your weight's coming down and your blood pressure's coming down, then we won't start a ACE inhibitor and you don't have to go to specific foods, but if it isn't, then we go to an ACE inhibitor or specific foods that will take the place of it. So I try and make a, a, a if you will, a contract with patients so that they know where the end point is. And the end point for this guy is losing weight is probably as important as getting rid of the blood pressure initially. So that's the main goal is to lose that 5% of weight initially and to get, because he's aging a great deal. His arteries are aging a great deal just by his waist size. So you want to get his waist down below 39 inches, um, and you want to get his weight down, um, you know, if you will, the, the 8 to 12 pounds that 5% will represent. Fair enough. And, of course, the reason we want to treat high blood pressure is to reduce risk for cardiovascular and, and other atherosclerotic events. Um, so in closing, um, is there, uh, what I hear from both of you is that you would like much more detail about what it is he's currently eating, and um, you would like to make sure that his sugar levels, uh, both in uh, food and in processed food, um, decline, because that seems to be a key towards exacerbating both insulin resistance and inflammation and leading towards, uh, towards aging, particularly arterial aging, uh, and that you would focus on knowing more of the detail of what he's eating so that you could tweak it and allow him to make better, more whole food choices. Uh, is that an accurate summary? I think that's pretty accurate. What I would say is that he doesn't even know what he's eating. Uh, if he's eating anything that even resembles a standard American diet. And uh, while he thinks he's eating healthfully, because the health claims on packaging say he's eating healthfully, I can pretty much guarantee you he's not, because he's got a BMI of 38 too, and he's got a blood pressure of 168. So we already know he's not eating healthfully. And he's certainly not exercising healthfully either. And I, I totally agree because I learned from John LaPuma. And by the way, John, I think your background in there, the background of the office that is as disheveled as all of us have it, you've, you've captured the office perfectly. <laughs> it's where I live. Um, uh, and last question. Our commenters said, Mediterranean diet and DASH diet, three or four of them said, uh, one or the other. Up or down on the Mediterranean or DASH diet for this guy, or do you not know enough yet? Um, I think that the DASH diet certainly works for hypertension. I think the Mediterranean diet works for metabolic syndrome. I think a lot of diets work for both of them. 
uh, I'm not for or against any one individual diet. I think that your biochemical profile, if you will, your proteomics probably dictate what diet works best for you. And without knowing more about this patient, it's really hard to prescribe a specific diet. I would rather know his biochemistry than his nutrition, but you know, we don't have that information. What I do know is that processed food causes metabolic syndrome and real food's the way out. That's what I know. Awesome. Mediterranean Dash. Uh, either is fine. Obviously, I believe the, the you on a diet version or the mind diet version uh, of those, which is just a, a little bit different, but is not much different. It's just avoiding, um, it's a greater avoidance of saturated fat in red meat and in uh, things that change your microbiome is all I would do differently than either of those. And I would get a little more specific on it. So I avoid cheese. I avoid um, red meat totally and uh, yolks totally. So that that's the only change or modification I would make because I think the science has advanced past just, um, if you will, DASH or uh, Mediterranean. Really great. So smart, so well informed, so focused. Thank you very much. Um, so there you have thank it. Thank you. No, it's great. We have a couple of uh, different approaches that have a unifying theme uh, about uh, how to use lifestyle and food to approach uh, treatment of hypertension. Um, for more information, please read our transcript and check out the reference links below with a citation both from Dr. Lustig and from Dr. Royson and some additional links about high blood pressure and food and lifestyle. And if you like, send us your own patient story so we can write a culinary Rx for you. Just go to medpagetoday.com and click on Submit Culinary Rx Case, and we can feature it in an upcoming segment. Uh, please share this with your friends and colleagues and try to get a Culinary Rx from your doctor today. For Culinary Rx and MedPage Today, Dr. Robert Lustig and Dr. Michael Royzen, thanks so much, and I'm John Lopuma. Take care. <laughs>